Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Melf's Minute Meteors. Do, 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 do. They're little baby meteors. It's not even remotely meteor swarm. We're not even like a tenth of the way there. I don't think that's what this compares to. <laughs> that's fair. This is a, uh, it doesn't compare well to other things either. This is a third level one action sorcerer wizard spell. I believe this was brought to us in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion. Now it's probably in like Santa Claus Guide to Everything or something. It's got concentration, 10 minute duration. Uh, range of self, takes an action to cast. It's got verbal somatic material component. The material component is niter, sulfur, and pine tar formed into a bead. Sure, cool. You create six tiny meteors in your space. They float around in the air and orbit you for the spell's duration. When you cast the spell, and as a bonus action each of your turns thereafter, you can expend one or two of the meteors, setting them streaking towards a point of your choice within 120 feet of you. Once a meteor reaches its destination or impacts a solid surface, it explodes. Each creature within five feet of the explosion makes a deck save, taking 2d6 on a failed or half as much as a success. It upcasts to give you bonus meteors equal to 2 plus the spell level above. So if it's like a 4th level slot, you get 2. If it's a 5th, you get 4. If it's a 6, you get 6 extra meteors on top of the 6 you get whenever you cast Melf's Minute Meteors. So, Bob, your initial impression. Uh, damage seems kind of small for a 3rd level spell, but it is kind of area of effect with five foot point that's that could hit a couple things sure um, however if you're if you're playing a character that lacks bonus actions this is something to do sure is very technically um we could let so let's just take the the six tiny meteors so each does 2d6 damage so each round you're pushing out two to 46 damage depending if you want to sound out one or two meteors in a five foot area so there's, at its surface level, if you do all six of the meteors, which takes three rounds to do, because it's the time you cast it, and then two bonus actions after that, you are getting a total of 12d6 damage, which is notable because it is more than the 8d6 gift from a fireball. It's just spread out over three rounds, which is kind of notable. It's in worse area, three five-foot sections-ish of meteor impacts is usually going to be worse than a one giant explosion, right? Like, if this was only able to hit two or three things at once, as opposed to five or six things, the fireball automatically is way better damage dice than this because it's going to encompass more targets at once. So it's going to multiply the damage way better. This is a harder time multiplying its damage because its area is so much smaller. It leaves it in this kind of space where, on paper, it might sound like a reasonable longer-term vision and version of a fireball. In practice... I have seen this be like, oh, I oh definitely should have just cast Fireball almost every time this gets cast. All right, but I mean, if you've got the spell slots to spare, I mean, you cast this first, and then you can fire out your little meteors in addition to casting Fireballs. Sure. If you, I think this will definitely shine its brightest if you're not casting it in combat, right? If you are going into a dungeon and you're like, okay, we expect, on the other, we can hear credit creatures on the other side of the store, we all have a prep round, all right, what are you doing? Throwing up your most minute meteors and then kicking the door in and firing off a bonus action version of two of the meteors plus a fireball is going to be like, oh, that's way better than just one fireball. It's a whole extra 46 damage. And then you got two more bonus actions worth of it at least, right? And that's going to be a very explosive intro, even more so than the 86. Now, do you need that at the tier of like, you know, fifth level where you want to be concentrating on this? Maybe. Maybe you want to ghoulishly overkill like 40 creatures at once, in which case, yeah, sure, sign me up. It is very dedicated to doing one thing, and that one thing is area effect damage, but it is slightly more effective, so it's got that going for it. Um, I find it odd it's a concentration of up to 10 minutes. Yeah. You only get, you know, I mean, if you yeah. really want to spread it out, you could use, you know, six turns, but mostly, I mean, I can't think of a reason you'd want to do that. Yeah. You can spend one or two meteors setting them streaking towards a point. So it would, I would say this, if you're against things that you know, like it gets waves of things. So they're like cobalt's coming in through the warrens round after round after round. And they're like coming through the walls and stuff and stabbing at you. And you know, they have like 10 hit points or less, probably five hit points or less, right? Because it, it averages seven damage for the 2d6. So as long as you know, you're killing them out, right? You could conceivably want to stagger it to go, okay, I hit these two on the left wall here, away from the one scum. I hit those two with these meteors. And then I hit these two with those meteors. And you're like kind of balancing it out. But like, you're right. 95% of encounters, I'm pretty sure. You're just gonna be like, yep, 
46 there is better than 2d6 there this round. So I'm you, going to fire spend, the 46 damage out. If you spend two meteors, do you have to have, choose the same target? You send them streaking towards a point of point or points you choose. So you can do separate targets right. if you'd like, which means, again, even in the scenario where the kobold's crawling through the walls, you need to be getting exactly two coming in each round in the same spot right. for that to be any amount of upside. Otherwise, you'd be like, take out these two different zones. Yeah. Correct. 95, 99% of encounters will yeah. never encounter that. Yeah. Absolutely there, right. About I can't that. think of any reasons to hold on to this for six rounds. Just uh, spend two at a time. Uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, that airtime. What else can we say about this? Uh, it so uh, this is a very I don't know. I I've never been impressed by Mel's my new meteors, and the reason I'm never impressed with it is because haste comes out, fireball comes out. Like there are a bunch of classic slam dunk wizard sorcerer spells that you're getting right now. I don't see anyone that's like. It's Melf Minute Meteor time, baby! We're gonna pop these off the sheet and just go crazy throwing around some 2D... It's like, eh. uh, it is, I mean, like if you've got such a wealth of spells available to cast, I'd be happy to have this. I don't know if I'm gonna actively choose it at the cost of not choosing something else. Because third level spells for Sorcerer and Wizard, that's... Those are the, your, your first wave of like, massively heavy hitters. And this, this is this again, is this is fun, and it gives you something to do for a bonus action if you don't if you don't have anything. But yeah. a lot of times you will have something to do. Yeah, you'll or even if you don't have something to like a bonus action, you'll have something you would rather be concentrating on, right? This is yeah. automatically hitting with all the summon stuff, right? So it's going to keep summon shadow spawn, summon undead, all those fun things that last a very long time and are going to be at fourth level, making two attacks around with no bonus action cost. They just get to do it for free, so it's even better than this. So, like, that makes this look a whole lot worse. The summon spells might yeah, be a little bit too good as far as, like, making some effects very difficult to use. I don't know if this needs concentration. Like, I, I think... Because it's limited by meteors anyway, I'm not particularly bummed out if you want to spend your bonus actions and all of your spell slots making a bunch of meteors to fly around you. That seems sweet, and the, this seems like maybe concentration overkill to me. I don't... I can't envision myself really feeling like I would ever need this on a character sheet, right? I don't... I, there, It's overkill compared to something like just Fireball, which is already a little bit of overkill at 5th level, right? Yeah. It, like, do you really need to be hitting this much harder all at once, which is sort of Melts My New Meteor's best case? I don't ever really want to be casting this in combat because I would much rather be casting just a fireball back to back in combat and be saving my action efficiency, right? Like, I I don't know. I think well, it the, is. The 10 minute duration does help with that a little bit. If you it's three rounds, got an, right? If you've got an inkling of an idea that you're about to get into combat, yeah. then you can. Wow, uh, it's better. It's, yeah, it's far better than a minute as far as that, as that sure. goes. Yeah. Um, now, you were talking about summoning spells. Am I correct in that sorcerers don't get that many? Probably less. We can double check, though. The Google is free. So it could be more valuable on them. I also see, so sorcerers tend to have the more narrow build focuses around, like, elemental theming, or, you know, mm -hmm. you go, like, uh, Draconic Sorcerer, when you go, like, Red Scales and go full fire, and this fits on the Arsonist character. At the same time, sorcerers get, like, eight spells known total. So making one of them be melt by new meteors is like is this ever in your top five third level spells you're taking top three because it kind of has to be for sorcerers, right? Ah, uh, yeah, probably not. Let's see, I'm looking. It's fine, sorcerers. So looking through the sorcerer spell list, they get none of the summon stuff at third level, so it's not competing with summon undead or anything there. It doesn't look like they get much summoning stuff at all. Yeah, so that's, that's good. what I thought. So, yeah, that's a point in Melp's favor for this one. Yeah, which again is like majorly reduced by them having a total of, at fifth level, six known spells. You get one third level spell. Is it going to be Melp's Minute Meteors? Oh, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. I don't know. I think this is like a... In a world where you are just flush with spells, if you're like a wizard that wants to be the number one arsonist on planet Earth, this might find a home somewhere on your sheet. I Beyond that, I think it's just a little too inefficient. It's just, it probably will do fine. You'll probably be able to just get make this a serviceable enough damage effect with enough flexibility, like especially in games that are heavily resource taxed where you want to maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of every single one of your spell slots. 
this is a good way to stretch a spell slot and to last for an encounter or two and give you a lot more things to do round to round in a fight. Like you fire off fireballs alongside the meteors and really like, you know, you're going to go through five more encounters before your next long rest. You got to make sure you're pacing yourself. This is a spell that goes into those tables. I don't think that's most tables though. And that ultimately is going to be making me think this is like, it's still not bad. It's still probably a three. It's just threes on the, in the case of sorcerers and wizards is not really that compelling. Right. Okay. That gives me like a benchmark. Cause I, I was thinking, how am I going to rate this? I I, yeah. I want to rate it in a vacuum, but it is competing against all these other amazing third level spell options. Uh, but yeah, three middle of the road sounds about right. I want I want to like this. I want I want to use this, but I I don't know if I can ever justify taking it. Yeah, listen. If you're sick of fireball, this is a very fine replacement for it. Like this will give you not as big instantaneous bursts, but it will let you. St- do a lot of the area damage control stuff that you're going to kind of ask out of Fireball in smaller ways. So, like, maybe you're, you've are you played three Wizards in your life and you're out there and you're just like, I cannot put Fireball on my sheet again. I just, I've done it too many times. Maybe try this. It's a it's similar enough, but it's still a decent shift. I mean, one of those options where if you don't want to blow up the entire room or, you know, the sure. burn down the forest, you, uh, this is another option. Smaller areas of explosions. Why not? All right. All right. Well, that was Melf's Minute Meteors. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think of the spell down in the comments, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe and all that, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, or you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.